This week we're going to Africa. I can remember my first trip to Africa way back when, when I was a young man hunting with archery. I had the opportunity to see whether we could open up the sport of hunting with archery equipment. Seven species went down. That was a long time ago. But this week, my friends, were hunting something called Black Death, the Cape Buffalo and the elephant, the largest of all game animals. It's an exciting adventure, folks. Don't go away. Bass Pro Shops and Alamositos Ranch present Bob Folkrod's Hunting Adventures. Seven continents, 80 species, a five year quest in the making. High adventure, dangerous game. Real world training tips. This is Bob Volkrod's Hunting Adventures. I would never tell anybody to come over and do the, the, the big five right off the bat. I tell them to come over, enjoy Africa, uh, shoot some planes game. Um, it doesn't have to be the, the biggest and baddest, you know, planes game out there. You can shoot a you know, kudu, what they call the gray ghost. I mean, that's something that's like our elk. Uh, you can drop down into a zebra, an impala, but just come over and enjoy Africa. Um, like I said before, I don't think there's any whitetail hunter that sits in a tree stand. If you had the opportunity and somebody says, you know, and it's not gonna cost you a penny, would you go to Africa? And Well, sure they are. And, and so right now it's affordable. They can save and they can, as what it costs you to go on a good quality elk hunt, you can come to Africa and you can hunt several species and at the same time take in all of Africa. Boy, they're big tall things, aren't they? Just eating off them. That'd be quite a sight, wouldn't it? Be sitting there in a tree stand and have one of the giraffes come up and look at you. Yeah, they're just little ones. There's a buck right there. And a little one. Another buck. Some does coming. I better get ready. They look like they could come to the water hole.
second. Well, Folk Rod, this is getting way too routine for me, shaking oh. your hand underneath this tower. <laughs> <laughs> These Impala came in, does came in, they got the rake in their antlers grunting <laughs> all over the place. They ran this way, they went almost out of sight, and then they came back again, started to come in, it was like putting pressure on the string, <laughs> off again. Finally, we got one coming in on this side, like, oh jeez, too much brush on this side. And then, whoop, these pop out. Oh, the second one, the second one. Comes in straight out. Turn sideways, whack, and you did it again. Yes, yes, he <laughs> ran about 80 yards out. He went into them bushes out, we got it marked from up there. We didn't get down, yeah. you know, and I know he's laying right there. Well, you're way too excited for an old man. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't come out of those trees, I know that. No, you said he went down around that clump. There he is, man. How about that? That looks like a nice ram. He held up right here in the Mopani trees. Beautiful ram, beautiful ram. You see he's been fighting, look at the edge of his horns there where, where the tips are frayed. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the most common species we hunt. It's probably the most common antelope that people hunt in Africa uh, because the meat quality uh, ex exceeds whitetail. You may not believe it. And they're just beautiful animals. They're about the size of a Texas whitetail. You know, they have, you see this one has a deep horn that curls up. This is a nice 20, 20 inch ram with good bases. He's, a, he's really an excellent, excellent Impala. <laughs> well, I've had a fantastic time. I'll tell you what, Ken, it's been It's, it's been, been an excellent time having yeah. you here. Let's get him in the skin and shape. Yeah, we don't have far to take him. Close captioning has been provided by Swarovski Optics. Bob Volkrod's Hunting Adventures is brought to you commercial free by these fine sponsors. Gore-Tex, Winchester Ammunition, Kinetrek, Kufaru, and LJ Blessings Ranch. opportunity we've got a nice skull here there's a few things I just want to explain to you if you use your if you try and use your eyes as a guideline if his head's that high and you shoot him say between the eyes all you're gonna do is go through this solid bone here and then through all the sponge inside here is it's just it's like a whole sponge and you're not gonna do anything to him you you won't even stun him yeah if you hit him that high okay this is where the tusks go in here this is the top of the tusk. If I broke this piece off here, you'd be able to see the top of the tusk. Okay. So the tusks come right in there. You know, so if you hit there, you're gonna hit one of the tusks. Right. So you need to keep very central, on, especially on the frontal brain, you need to keep very central on the head. But when you, when you, see, when you see the elephant alive, you'll see what I mean with the ear holes. The ear holes do stick out. You know, they definitely stand out. Once you see it the first time, You'll know, you'll know what I'm meaning. I mean, just keep that, just keep that line. Okay, so <clears throat> where's, where would you hit him? Facing here right now then. Like that. So then you still, you're gonna be hit yeah, right here. Yeah, back in there. Okay. Yeah, remember this, this is the, this is the hot, this is the most solid bone. This one and this one. Those are the two, the two big ones. But a 375 will go, we'll go straight through that. And then this, the side brain, because his head's in that position. Like we were talking earlier, the a perfect brain shot, perfect side brain would probably be about that far in front of, in okay. front of the ear hole. Okay. Like in there. But, like I said to you, use the ear, use the ear hole as a guideline. It's a perfect target. 
take that target and use it and just put him straight in there. Put the shot near all huh? And he's not going anywhere. Bob Folkrod's hunting gear includes a Browning A bolt and 375, and Winchester solid ammunition, Swarovski optics, redhead and doer skin base layers, redhead clothing with Gore Tex and Windstopper, and a crooked horn bino system. An elephant, I mean, when it was right into the heart of the things, I mean, when the actual, we were there, we could hear him breaking branches, you know. And it's hard to explain how you feel inside because, again, you're excited and you have a lot of anticipation inside and something just is, keeps pushing you forward. You know there's danger involved and we're following the tracks, the trackers are on to them and you're getting closer and closer because you can hear them. And you can, it's like hunting turkeys, you, you know where they are and we're, and we're putting on a stalk and all of a sudden there he was, he appeared. And we just, magnificent, I mean he was just huge, just like you expected him. And you know you're gonna get close to this animal and to make a right shot and, and, and we keep going and going and I mean, now he's like, you know, 40 yards, and now he's like 30 yards, and we're right amongst them. We got one to our right, we got one to our left, and we're glassing him. And then all of a sudden, you know, one looks like he's gonna, he's gonna come at you, so we back off a little bit, and we discuss which one we're gonna shoot, and then we're right back in on top of him again. And it's just like, even though Spike was there with a backup and Charlie's there with a backup, it's just like, really, it's just like you're there by yourself and you know you have to make this right. And you move in and move in and, and you're waiting for everything because it's different than hunting by yourself. You got this camera running over your shoulder, so for the first time, you're hunting one of the largest, biggest creatures on earth and you're really trying to do it right because you want it on the show. You're waiting for Dustin to say yes. You're waiting for the PH to say yes. But when it came, when it happened, it all happened at once. I, I, the opportunity came, I dropped on the knee, the scope settled, and I remember myself saying, breathe and do it right. Back off, back off, back off, sorry. When well, the sound of it went off, I watched him fall in the scope and it was, uh, it was great. It was it, like nothing you ever shot. Come up here. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a rush. Hold on, Robert. I'm telling you Perfect what. Perfect shot. Right in on top of him. <laughs> right on top of him. I mean, we... We were right there in that one turn around and looked at us, and we had to back off. We kept on having to go in and yes, out. Yes, yes. And, and then I could see, I could see the shot happen. You said, "Come on, come on, come on!" I could see the whole head. That's when the, the last time I pulled you out, that big bull turned and took a few steps towards us, and I was scared that he was going to spook, and then this boy was going to go. Oh yeah. So we backed out, and he came across, and we went straight back in there, and you did a perfect brain shot. I watched him. We just boom. boom. What a rush, man, what a rush. What a nice way to shoot an elephant. Yes. No suffering. No. Beautiful animals. Down and out, just like that. Yeah. Right there, 20, 30 yards. No oh, less than that. I think the shot was like 15 yards. Unbelievable. That was something. I know some other folks that want to see this, man. Let's get them. Let's go and get them. Well, I'm a very fortunate individual that gets the chance to hunt all over the world and I take an opportunity to go hunting anything that I have a license to hunt. And I figure that's up to the state or provinces and in this case Africa to be able to tell me whether I can hunt an elephant or not. So do I feel bad about that? No. I had an opportunity to hunt an elephant and the elephant itself is a true success story. And, and anybody or hunting in general um, through the conservation efforts of man and, and what we've done for deer and turkey and elk, you know, in the states and then what they've done for elephant. I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling. Anybody wants to listen 
um, can't really can't really argue with success. Elephant, we're not poachers, we're hunters. And I had the opportunity to come and hunt an elephant. And when I guess when I was, you know, 12 to 16, 18, and maybe 21, I never dreamed of coming over to Africa and hunting an elephant. I dreamed about it, but I never thought it would come true. So the elephant itself is, is a true success story, just like elk and deer and everything else. For help with all of your hunt booking needs, contact J&M Safaris at jnmsafaris.com. Although Bob completed his obsession quest taking over 80 animals with a rifle, his first love has always been bow hunting. He's teamed up with longtime friend and archery coach Mike Price to help make you a better bow shot. This week's archery lesson is brought to you by Heritage Archery Academy and these great archery sponsors Hoyt, Trueball, Easton, Limb Saver, Gateway Feathers, and Dirt Nap. This week we're going to talk about equipment choices. We're going to talk about your arrow rest. The most friendly, forgiving rest that we have today is a drop away rest. All right? And one of the reasons it is, is that when I load it in the tree stand, now I can move all over the place and that arrow's gonna stay in there. I can still hunt with it. I can tree stand hunt with it. It's not gonna go anywhere. The good thing about this rest is that if I come to full draw and I let down, because I don't wanna shoot that animal, if I let down, it stays up. But when I go to shoot the animal, if I shoot the animal, it drops right out of the way. So the whole deal is that once that drops out of the way, now with a string stop, the arrow comes off approximately right here every time. Now there's nothing that's gonna make contact with that arrow to deter it from where I want it to go. I want it to go right where I'm aiming. So we worked for years and years to get total clearance on our rests or to get as much as we could so the arrow would come out of the bow straight and clean. Now with a drop away rest, I can shoot a full helical feather, get full clearance. I can shoot a full helical vein. I can shoot any combination I want and get full clearance out of my bow. So when this thing leaves that string and that rest is out of the way, there's nothing to get in the way of the arrow going where you want it. This should help you with making a good rest choice. The story of the hunt, uh, we seen some and uh, put the trackers on uh, on their track, which is amazing. Uh, you, know, you think they're, you know, they're tracking several of them, but we're walking through the jungle and we're we're getting closer to them, and 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 all of a sudden they bust off, and you don't know for for that real instant are they are they running away from you or are they coming at you? And the trackers keep going after them, and after them we push in and. And you're really tensed up as you, you just you're after something that could actually run over you and kill you any second. So we got several people on this whole trip and we probably sound like a herd of elephants trying to get through the woods. And, but we we only bumped them once and then we had a we had some luck. There was a little indentation in the ground and we just came up onto them. Spike was able to get up close enough where we could look at him, and, and I was right back of him, and I used the binoculars, and we glassed and glassed, and there was nothing there that we wanted. Oh, those boys here were pretty close, eh? We nearly got a chance there. Pity there wasn't a nice bull in there. That female was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, she wide. was really wide. There yeah. were two bulls there that one of them, I don't know, I, didn't, I never saw his width, but he was still very, very soft. 
Um, it was nice to get them in the jest there, it's pretty tough. Eh? Mm. That wind is just swirling and swirling. <laughs> I think what we'll do now, we'll just head back to the truck and maybe we'll catch that other herd we saw this morning. Okay. We'll just hopefully they'll go and lie down. Um, we'll just try them for a while. Um, then we'll probably have something to eat and then we'll head down to the river. We might catch some bulls coming down to the river this evening. They come out to drink or yeah. they just feed along the no, river? No, they go like the stuff we've just been in. In the heat of the day they go in there and then they come out to feed and to drink in the evenings into the more open area, something like this. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. This was a perfect setup. Right? That was, we had it was. Right? Yeah. Well, good deal. Okay, well, let's go and see how it goes. Transportation for all of Bob Volkrod's hunting adventures is provided by Victor Chevrolet. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. He's got mud all over him, doesn't he? Yeah. There's a couple of bulls in there. They're moving across. Hopefully they look like they want to come across. Let's just watch them for a little bit. I definitely want to get a better look at them. Let's just walk up the river and hopefully they'll come across. It was getting toward dark. We was coming, dropping into the riverbed, and and uh, Dustin and I actually spotted some on the other side, and bingo, there they were. And and there was a whole herd of them. And it was the first time you could know nothing in the way, so you really got a good chance to look at uh, Cape Buffalo. Yeah, they are nice, don't they? I'm just hoping those bulls are going to come across. They're not part of that herd of cows. see what these other bulls are going to do. And this herd still hasn't finished coming across. Alright, this, this bull's getting closer now. Some were mud, some were, some were small, and it was pretty obvious once they, they told you which one's the big one and which one's the small one, which one you wanted. luck would have it, there was one, actually there was a couple over there. There's one, you see, you see there's two, there's two that are covered in mud. Yes. One's got a broken horn. The other one, the other one hasn't, he's not bad. Then there's one that's lagging right at the back, right at the back of the group, and he also looks quite nice. Hey, but no, come here and look at you, no, come here. 
And it was just like he had on a fish line, like we were meant to take this Cape Buffalo. And all of a sudden he starts coming at us. And he, he doesn't have a clue we're there. And he just keeps walking and walking. And this is way too little bit. Spike keeps looking at him, so that's that's a good one right there. You know, take your time and make a good shot. I got excellent footage. It's coming. Let's just get ready. He's coming, he's coming closer, coming closer. You ready? Yeah. Okay, he's a good one, take him now. Can I him again? Hit him again? He started back across again and I hit him again. It was just like one of them carnival toys there. And then he sat back across again. And Right, 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 right for him, right for him. Try and get one on the shoulder. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> well, well, shot, Can you believe that? I hit him again, and then he got in the grass. And then it was tense because we didn't hear the death moaning. It was right on pins and needles. They were walking through that small right, grass. Just right would he just come just for you or would he be dead? Well, he should be just behind you. Yeah, there he is there. Come aside a little bit. Fortunately, he was dead and we made a good shot. Okay, just hang back, hang back. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to put my hands on a Cape Buffalo. Oh, look at the size of that animal. Yeah, look at these bosses. I'll nice tell you buffalo. what, that was scenic. Coming across Very the nice stuff like that, that was fantastic. We couldn't ask for anything better. Too. Pretty strong animals, eh? He went a fair <clears throat> ways, but a perfect shot. Oh. And he we was couldn't done. ask for more than that. Couldn't ask for more. All right. After your successful hunt of a lifetime, contact Wes Good at KanadiStudio.com for the finest taxidermy in the business. Be sure to follow Bob and all his adventures at bobfolkrod.com and on Facebook.